Blessings and peace be with you. My name is Tamara, and I have the privilege to be the pastor here at High Country United Church of Christ in Western North Carolina. And I am excited that you have chosen to, to worship with us for this worship service, which is recorded for the 21st of February. It is the first Sunday in Lent for us. And I want you to know that in this season, you are welcome here to join this journey with us. Whoever you are, whatever your belief system, however you show up, uh, you are welcome to join us. And if you would like to know more about us or how to connect with us, I want to offer you three specific ways of connection uh, deeper with us into and through this season of Lent. Number one, we're going to be handing out and delivering worship packets this week. Of the week of February the 21st. And I need a few delivery drivers to add to my cadre. So if you want to add that to your week, please be in touch with me. Number two, we are a congregational body, which means that our strength and our polity is from the bottom up. And you are welcome to join with us as we seek and be the church through joining our council meeting, which will be the first Monday which for us will be March the 1st, and then the first Mondays thereafter. So if you want to be a part of that, let us know. And then the third thing is we are in the process to hopefully begin these sometime in the season of Lent to really develop some small groups for connection. And I don't know exactly what kind of connection that you need or you seek, but we have some people wanting to do a book study. We have some people wanting to talk theology. Uh, we're going to do a, a piece on healing and recovering. So what does it really mean to understand this word healing and or how do we stay on the path of recovery? Maybe you just need to have a fun group to drink coffee with and to laugh and to tell your weekly stories to connect. Whatever that may look like or mean for you, whether you want to be a host or you want to be welcomed into a group, uh, please be in touch with me so that we can get you hooked up and we'll have a better understanding of when these groups will begin. And to repeat myself, today we begin Lent. This season really began uh, a few centuries after the life of Jesus. And it began as an intense time of introspection and reflection and ultimately confession about who we are and how we understand ourselves to be. And as we understand the life of Jesus, we notice that he encouraged people all along his journey to speak up and encouraged to invite them into what was the truth for them knowing that when we begin to tell our stories of truth, there healing begins to occur. And it is, in with this, in, it is with this type of healing that compassion begins to emerge from within the body. And so I want to invite you into these next four to five, six weeks of healing, where truly you join in with us you go inside yourself and to name those things that are broken, those things that need healing. The Latin word, the Latin origins of the word confess mean to study and to acknowledge. And so this will be a season where we study healing and the process of recovery within and through community, within and through our own reflections. And so to do this, we absolutely acknowledge our need to restore our own holy vessel. So I'm going to invite you now to continue on with us in this time of worship as we contemplate how to restore our holy vessels. Beach glass, otherwise known as sea glass, begins as something whole and yet discarded. 
As it is tumbled by the sea, it is broken and polished until it becomes a treasured mineral gem. We do not embrace that suffering is necessary, nor is it God-given. When pain comes and brokenness enters our lives, Jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure that we, each one of us, we all are. We are worthy of new life in the midst of hopelessness. One year ago, COVID-19 arrived in all parts of the globe. For some, this wreaked havoc on their world. And so today, we begin a season to contemplate the practice of healing. We want to affirm our journey to physical health. God, we are bodies fashioned by the Creator's hand in the Creator's own image, shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty, and yet too often we have ignored the sacred nature of our physical lives. The holy vessels you have fashioned are tired and suffering, ravaged by months of disrupted rhythms and ailments. Our fragility has come into full view, and we can be frightened. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss, and so we look away, sometimes even from our own needs. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move, one step at a time toward greater care. Into this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Know this. Know this, God's love and grace surrounds you, no matter what. You are precious and a holy vessel right now. You are a co-creative treasure gifted with light. This light is for you and it's for me and it is for all of us. And so let us take a deep breath in and let this truth fill you and each one hearing this message of truth. May we breathe out a relief of assurance. And as we continue to breathe in and out God's love and grace, may we emanate our life and our light and our love and our health out to those we know as well as to those we know not. Out beyond your walls, out beyond our county, out into the world. May it be so this day. Hi friends, for those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Mark Burroughs and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries at First United Methodist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. And all my friends here call me Mr. Mark. And I feel very honored that I've been invited by your church to get to be a part of your faith community and spend some time together exploring the importance of healing, not only during this season of Lent, but during this entire new year. 
Now before we get started, there's a few things you need to have on hand. The first thing is those of you who joined me last time, make sure you have your sheet that you tore into. Now those of you joining us for the first time, I will get you caught up in just a second. So make sure you have that. A pencil or a crayon or multiple crayons and some clear tape. All right. Now, before we get on to that, I think we should all do something that's an incredibly important healing act, and that is breathing. And I don't just mean inhaling and exhaling, taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide, but truly breathing. You know, every time we take a breath, that's more than just oxygen. We are breathing in a spirit breath. We are breathing in the breath of God Almighty that is filling our lungs, healing us from the inside out. Let's all breathe in together deeply through the nose and sigh it out. Ah, oh, that feels good. Let's do that again. Now let's experience God's love in the world as an act of healing. And here's where you need to have that sheet that you tore in half. And for friends who are joining us for the first time, I want you to find a sheet of paper. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about something, a way that you have been felt hurt in the last year. It's been a year with a lot of hurts, where we've heard mean things and seen mean things. And we've just had to deal with a lot of sadness of giving up activities that we love, like sports or singing in a choir or maybe even coming together in, in our houses of worship. Or maybe you just feel frustrated at having to do so many things virtually. Or maybe you feel angry about things that aren't fair that have happened to you or things that have been unfair that have happened to others. And when you think about that hurt, what I want you to do is take that sheet of paper and I want you to wad it up. And well, we didn't make the hurt go away. It's still there in the wadded up paper. It's just messy now. So let's unwad that paper. And then what I want you to do is tear it in half right down the middle. And now you've got not one, but two small torn sheets of paper. But it didn't really make the hurt go away, did it? Well, now you're at least caught up with where we are. So let's all join in together for this next step. The next thing I want you to do is take those, sheet, those two sheets, smooth them as much as you possibly can, and then afterwards I want you to take some of that clear tape and in a few places I want you to tape it so you tape that sheet of paper back together again wherever it was torn I put the tape on the same side where those words were that I scribbled and for those of you who just tore your paper today just pick one side and put the tape just on one side and anytime you need to pause this video if you have that capability to catch up you go right ahead I've tried to do the pause thing before and I can't do it for very long so now you've got that sheet of paper. It's a mess, isn't it? I mean, it's wrinkly and bumpy. It's torn down the middle. It's got tape on it. And I can still kind of see those blurry words that I wrote, those hurts. But are we stuck like this? No. Now we get to do one of the most important parts of the healing process. Turn the page. Look at that. Now, does turning the page mean that those hurts never happened? No. Those hurts happen, and they're part of our story. Is this new page perfect? No. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it's, but it's a new chance. It's a new start. And we get to create something meaningful and beautiful with what we have. And that's what we're going to do. So what I'd like you to do is take your pencil or your crayon and on this new page you can fill it and you can use a whole bunch of crayons if you want to and make a beautiful picture an inspiring picture or you can write some inspiring hopeful words or you can write a whole letter of that's uplifting and inspiring and I'm gonna write something right now and once again I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time doing it but once again if you need to pause this and you have that capability at any point just fill up your whole page with something that's uplifting, something lovely, something kind, something beautiful, something
something healing. And I wrote an uplifting word. I wrote new friends. You're my new friends now. And you know what? I, I feel so lucky that through this, I get to be a part of you and your faith community. And I want you to know that you're a part of mine. Thank you for spending some time together with me. And if you want to give your beautiful thing to a friend or to a family member, or if you just want to put it up on your wall as a reminder that God's love is healing. God's power is in transforming. God doesn't throw away. God takes whatever there is and we give it to God and God makes something beautiful. And you have that power, that healing power that God put right inside you. Let's close by talking to God in prayer. <clears throat> so repeat after me. I'll use my voice, but sometimes I'll use motions that you can echo as well. Here we go. Loving God. We come to you with hearts, hands, minds, and souls in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out. So that we may reach out to help heal your world. Amen. Bye, friends. See you next time. I invite you to pray with me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is for you. We believe that wherever two or three are gathered, believing that they are together there in the midst of them, the Spirit resides. O God of the morning and of the night, of the rain and of the sun, of joy and of sadness, we gather in this space to hear your word. May our hearts break open. May the impediments that refuse us to hear be washed away so that in all of our being we hear your word and may it offer healing to us. May all the meditations of our hearts in this time and across space, may they be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock, our healer, and our redeemer. Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew taken from the eighth chapter. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him. And aside here, just a quick aside, way back here, long ago in this very ancient story, here we just heard the beginning of stigma. Notice that this story does not give this man a name. He does not, the writer, Jesus, there is no naming of this man. He does not say Nathan was diagnosed with leprosy. And really the Greek word here is actually more like psoriasis, a skin ailment. Nope. The storyteller writes and the translator translate a leper. <laughs> and then we wonder why stigma is so prevalent today. It's been with us from the beginning. Back to my story. Nathan, who came to Jesus, knelt before him saying, Lord, if, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched Nathan, saying, I do choose you. Be made clean. And immediately this man's skin, Nathan, his ailment was cleansed. Then Jesus said to Nathan, See that you say nothing to anyone, 
But go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. May we hear this word's truth for us today. This story confessionally brings me back to H.P. Webb Elementary School and the playground behind it. It's fourth grade. There's two teams gathering to pick teams for kickball. Scott, the team leader over here where he first chooses Martha. Shelly over here, she chooses them. Jim, and on and on the choosing happens. The same ones get chosen first, second, third, and fourth every time. The strong, the fast, the astute, the wily, the crafty. They were always chosen first. Their bodies were more likely to withstand the competition. Their bodies, these bodies made up the body, the kickball team, that could win demoralizing the others who were no less holy, no less sacred, no less beloved, but still these losers would take on the big stigma of the ill. Right? And, and then similarly, last week, honestly, I, I hung my head when I read the Wataga Democrat as it had two large articles long, lengthy, detailed articles of vaccine delivery. Who gets the shots first? When there are extra drips, extra doses of vaccine left at the end of the shift, who gets them? Vaccinating the body is offering healing to the body. And yet, we seem to always find one more way to tear ourselves apart when we decide who goes first, who goes second, who goes last. Not truly trusting the procedures, the protocols, or the doses given. Or learning to lean into that in our own humanity, creating systems of as much justice and fairness for all. Leprosy was that disease that actually literally tears the body apart. Skin dangled, ooze seeped, fingers, noses. Well, they weren't guaranteed to be secure. Jesus, please, please just choose to heal me. What is it like? What is it like when we need a new knee, a new hip, or a procedure here or there, and we live in a pandemic? Elective surgeries, elective surgeries are on hold. The good news Hear this good news. Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer, well, the vaccines are here and there's more on their way and they will continue to come to us in time. Modern medicine has skills, solutions, and protocols unlike ever before. Dietitians can offer down to a science foods that are right for you and for me. Physical therapists and coaches and trainers, well, they can design workouts and stretches and strength training specific to you and to me for our specific needs, for our recovery, for our healing. All you, all I have to do is to ask, choose me. Like Nathan, though, Maybe the timing isn't today or tomorrow. Maybe living with the disease or the element, maybe it might take a few more days or a week until the appointment is scheduled. Or maybe a, a month more until Jesus actually decides to come walk through our neighborhood. And fortunately, I think too often in our waiting, we hear that as understanding our lack of, of worthiness and too often in our day that lack of worthiness de often determined by our own sense of body image our comparison demeans us far more often than we find celebration or encouragement within our own physical selves even after a six-week worship series that we just concluded naming ourselves as god's image as made in God's image as co-creators and conduits of God's holiness again and again and again our own humanity begins to get lost in comparison with others 
And I wonder if it is our jealousy or our coveting another's own physical body that causes us to desecrate our own, forgetting that we truly are holy vessels made in God's image. And then finally, maybe, we begin to realize that it is our own bodies that are beside the very road asking each one of us as we pass by, as we look in the mirror, if you wanted to, you could heal me, choose me. Our bodies beseech us. Ouch. This would mean if I chose to find and to seek healing, this would mean that instead of just reading and talking about healthy food choices, the importance of sleep, the healing effects of meditation, the tremendous effect that just 20 minutes of walking a day can have, that smoking takes years off our lives, that high blood pressure is one of the top three markers of our healthy aging, that safe behaviors include driving without any distractions, and that attitude and mental process impact total health. Instead of just reading and talking about these truths, that we would actually need to change our behaviors to live wholeheartedly, knowing healing, understanding compassion for ourselves, choosing our health. Whew. And so a few weeks ago, a month ago, when Dr. McPhee suggested that this worship series for Lent would be one to consider knowing that vaccines were on the way, knowing that we'd be emerging from a pandemic, I thought, exactly, exactly, this is the one for us. And the truth is, when we live into healing, when we live into recovery, it is hard work. You that have gone through physical, physical therapy, you know the hard work. You who have made those behavior changes, you know the hard work. You will never be the same again. Emerging from this pandemic, we will not be the same again. It will be hard work as we decide where to trust ourselves, where to trust others. What have we learned in this last year that we need to let go of, that we need to apply and to begin to learn into? Our values have changed. Our beliefs have changed. Our bodies have changed. Our hair has grown long. And we're going to be emerging into practices of resurrection. And so as we move into these six weeks, into this season of Lent, as we confess, as we study and acknowledge, truth is physical healing is painful. Consisting of weeks and months and years of conscious eating and drinking, prioritizing sleep, using and engaging all of our muscles and tendons to keep them all alive and alert. And we breathe deep together. And still our physical body say, choose me. You have the power to choose. And so for me, I am beginning to take my inspiration from those I am naming amazingly strong and grace-filled, those willing and brave enough to name themselves as trans, those holy vessels, these holy vessels who are brave enough, bold enough, strong enough, and care about themselves to enter into the long haul, the long transformative journey to recover their physical body that aligns with how they know themselves to be. May we tap into this same strength and boldness to learn from our trans brothers and sisters the courage to name ourselves as holy vessels and to celebrate with our trans brothers and sisters their own healing as it comes. May we all understand ourselves as holy vessels, living into it, choosing healing. Come, Lord Jesus, choose me. If you want to, you can heal us. And we hear Jesus say, 
I do choose you. May it be so this day. Amen. As with many seasons of the church year, we're reminded that Lent is a journey. We attempt to journey alongside Jesus for those 40 days in the wilderness, realizing that we too have our own wilderness times. So today I invite you into our prayers together. I invite you to add your prayers in the comments section to connect with each other and to make those things which Fill your heart with grief or sadness, with joy, with excitement, with hope. Make all of those things known to those who are gathered here. Let us pray. Comforter in our every ill, especially our malady of separation and fear, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries from our broken bodies, minds, and spirits. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. As demolished pieces that are treasured when found, we trust that beauty from brokenness is possible when we seek to bind together that which is wounded. We pray especially for those who have experienced the physical loss of family and friends in the pandemic and those who are still suffering the consequences of this illness. We pray for each person who suffers in body in other ways, weariness from inactivity or weariness from overactivity in this time. We pray for those whose treatment of maladies have been put on hold and those who suffered isolation in their illness, whatever the cause. We pray grateful thanks for the medical staff everywhere around the world who have shown unbelievable strength and stamina. And we mourn the demise of too many caregivers who risked their lives for our sake. Hear all of our prayers that we share together comment section aloud by ourselves. Great comforter, be with us. Give us the comfort of your presence. Amen. week during this journey through Lent, we will invite you into some ritual action, something that you can do on your own or with others, something that might bring you closer to the spirit, help you experience the divine, the comfort that you need to feel. We hope that these actions will facilitate that for you. In this series, we're focusing a lot on sea glass something that has edges that were once sharp and hard from being broken, but now worn down and smooth. So I invite you on this path with me. I invite you to see the path and see all of the trees around it. And then I invite you up to the water. 
Though we do not have a beach to see sea glass on, we do have streams all around us. The rushing water has too worn those stones smooth from those rough edges that were once broken off of a larger stone. I love these rocks because in the water they are elusive. They are beautiful and multicolored and then you pull them out and dry them off and they don't look the same. They are meant to be in this amazing compilation underneath the water together with other rocks forming the stream. Reminds me a lot of community. We are all in this together in our broken pieces, being made smooth, working together to become this beautiful compilation. For our ritual action this week, I hope that you will find a stream yourself, or that you will find a river stone, smooth and worn, and that you'll be reminded that the spirit is with us as this water is, helping us to grow, to heal those parts of us by comforting us, showing us that we are part of a larger community. We are not alone in this river. Amen. Melt our cold hearts 
begin to complete our time together, I want to acknowledge that our own work of recovery and healing will sometimes feel immediately refreshing and comforting, and truth be told, sometimes it will demand a harsh or an uncomfortable effort from us. It is a journey, a process for those seeking wholeness and a depth of inner peace. Often this appears unexpectedly when we lean into and welcome truth with a capital T. And so if, like Mr. Mark, you desire new friends or connection, and this is a part of your healing and or recovery process, know that this week we'll be delivering worship packets. And if you want to help out with us, uh, we would love to, to engage you, so reach out and let us know that. Uh, if you want to be in touch with us and join a small group at 915 on Sunday mornings, again, please be in touch and we will find a group that works for you, specific to a conversation or the need for support or just learning for a place to laugh and be real together. Know that we do have a need of some small group hosts, and so if that is your calling, Please don't hesitate to reach out. I invite you to receive this benediction this day. Now go with confidence as treasures, as holy vessels of God, recovering your depth of love for all, renewing your joy of living in and through grace and mercy living into and with the world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I choose you. And may the Spirit hover, may the Spirit move and deliver salve to your soul and a spring into your step. Amen and amen.